Hi, welcome back to Gary Keep It Simple. Today, I've looked at some news groups and I've seen some stuff and I know that there's some confusion going on, so I thought I'd give it a quick run through. I'm trying to keep things simple, because that's the way the channel should be. Right, the thing is, Deoxit, WD-40, are they the same thing? Well, maybe, maybe you might just be able to get away with saying that, but let's, let's see where we go. Because Deoxit is excellent stuff. It, it's for switches and volume controls and motors and any electrical thing that may be having problems with age. It is safe on plastic and it's made for the job. There are other brands available, but you know, it's basically the same stuff. Now, WD-40 is an interesting thing. It's excellent stuff. It does what it says in the tin. <laughs> what it says is WD-40, so it's the 40th formulation of a water dispersant generated by a company back in the early 50s and they used it on a rocket and they were called rocket industries or something like that anyway uh, you, you can go look it up on on wikipedia they've got the full full sort of story on it and also you can look it up on the wd-40 site anyway the thing is it does what it says on the tin it's water dispersant and it has insulation properties that's why it's so good at solving problems like water on ignitions and of cars and things i had a mini back in the mid 70s and if you had a mini in the 70s or 80s, 60s or 70s you needed to have a tin of wd-40 in your car because in england it's wet and the ignition system was located just behind an open grill that's the entire ignition system. Distributor, ignition coil, spark plugs, all behind a grill that was open. Anyway, and it used to get wet, and of course you needed help <laughs> in terms of several times in the winter because it used to just get wet. Anyway, WD-40 is what you used to use, and it disperses the water, cleans off the dirt, and allows the insulation to work. So you, know, you spray it on the cap, give it a rub, and hey presto, you're working again. If you've got seeds, nuts and bolts, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Because you spray it on, it eases it in, and it penetrates and it comes off, you know, un it makes the bolts come off again, which is the way you want it to be. Now, if you've got seeds, nuts and bolts, stiff shafts, etc., WD-40 can ease the lube that's gone sticky, so it can actually act as a solvent and, uh, you know, reactivate the lube you may not actually need to strip it down and re-grease re it because you know, you're, you're up and running again and very often these things just need to get moving and they're, they're okay again so on rusty nuts dry nuts and bolts the penetration is good and it does have a lubricating effect which is what we know however it is not a permanent lube uh, but it's a good start so it's, you know if you put it on you have to spray it a little again a little bit later and uh, yeah that's how we get there now this is where we have a there is almost no overlap in function also plastic which is what most things in cassette decks and amplifiers and radios uh, that sort of thing plastic is not happy with petroleum based stuff if you've ever put petroleum based fluid on expanded polystyrene you know the stuff styrofoam i think the americans call it styrofoam but the white stuff that you you find in boxes it dissolves it, it turns into a goo and dissolves that is what petroleum does to some plastics so plastic is not happy with petroleum based stuff of any kind especially if it is sticky because it stays on it and then it just eats its way through there is no way to ensure the spray does not come into contact with plastic if you're going to use WD-40 you, know, um, you get a cloud so in the 80s contact cleaner was not as safe as it is now Plastics have changed, but if you use WD-40, there is no reason to think it will be safe. Old plastic is going to be brittle and degrading. People are talking about this all the time on the on the forums, how bits of plastic lugs and gears and things are breaking. Uh, add a plastic unfriendly substance like WD-40 and you're asking for trouble. The whole thing is it's just waiting to happen. When I was a Panasonic service agent, there were different greases and they had to be called for different uses. So cogs had one grease, um, dampers had a different grease. There was about six in the kit and the kit wasn't cheap, so but you had to buy it. Um, 
three and one oil and that sort of thing was not allowed to be used because you couldn't guarantee that it wouldn't get onto something and contaminate it so the belts could get contaminated and the pulleys and things so the rubber idlers would go was funny so you weren't allowed to use that the grease and the lubes you had to use were the ones that were called up by the manufacturers so that brings us on to what WD-40 have to say about it and this is for the standard original product and if we look at it here you can see that they've got a couple of warnings on there specifically it warns about things that you can actually use it on nearly all surfaces and it says that some plastics polycarbonate and polystyrene may craze or crack always test the surface first have you ever done anything with a lead acid battery like clean the terminals if you have you'll recognize this sort of damage this is caused by acid what happens is you get a little bit of a splash and then several days later it then starts showing as holes when we're coming down to contact cleaner or wd-40 we don't know what it's going to be used on we don't know what the components are actually made of but what we can say is that this and this is not the same as a set of rusty bolts and whilst this is electrical you can't really compare it to a volume control Everything we use is going to be made of plastic and we need to look after it. This is the sort of products that actually WD-40 make. Only one of them is the original product, but several of them are variations of it. But there's one product they do make which is worth having, which is called WD-40 Contact Cleaner. But you can't just use the generic words, oh, I'm going to spray it with WD-40 because which one would you choose? And the trouble is, people who don't know any better, they choose the first one they find under their hand. So would they know to go for this one or this one? This is the one you should use, of course. And as you can see, there's two versions there. Because quite simply, if you start off with this and you spray it with the wrong stuff, you could end up with this. Now, that's a little bit extreme, maybe, but maybe not. This is the one I tend to use. This is called Service Oil, and it's available in the UK. And this is the original Deoxit, which is quite expensive, but it's available in America. And this is what if you type in contact cleaner you get on Amazon UK loads of different ones all of which are perfectly satisfactory you just have to choose which one you want to buy one of the reasons I'm so emphatic about this is back in the 80s I actually had a rather nice Hitachi TV radio cassette boombox and I'll show you a picture of it in a minute and there it was quite happily working with a bit of a scratchy pot I sprayed it with what we had in the workshop at the time and this was what it looked like but within six months, the knob fell off and the bit underneath the chassis had snapped. Wherever the spray had gone, the plastic went hard. So WD-40 say be careful. Mitigating damage from WD-40 on this survivalfreedom.com which says, be careful. You don't know what it's going to do. And so that's the words I've got advice to you. Use the correct spray for the correct job. Don't try and think, oh, I'll just use that. Because at the end of the day, it'll all go wrong and you've got nobody to blame but yourself on a more cheerful note at least you can get a good choice nowadays anyway that's the end of the video if you'd like to subscribe or like or share or anything like that please feel free and i'll catch you another time bye, -bye.